Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this latest eruditic conversation. And I am absolutely delighted to invite Elvair Regnier Lucia to talk about regenerative procurement. And we're going to find out what that is in a minute. But um, Elvair, lovely to see you again. Um, how are you? Perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're up to. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Thank you for inviting me for this uh, interview. Um, so uh, I'm Elvire, uh, so this is the way uh, you should pronounce it in French. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, um, I have 30 years of experience in procurement um, uh, in global companies, Colgate Palmolive, Unilever, uh, in Switzerland, the US, uh, also some um, I am working in other industries like construction, um, company called Guide Construction here in France. Uh, L'Occitane right. as a CPO, uh, so a um, lot of experience in procurement and in diverse uh, industries. Well, and, wonderful. Um, I well, no, I'm saying we, we've crossed paths many times, right? Yes, yeah, 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 absolutely, because I have been invited to to give, uh, to participate to a roundtable in uh, in Barcelona last year, uh, or uh -huh. the year before, and you were the, uh, you were the, um, a master of ceremony, I would say. So uh, it's one of I my really favorite enjoyed. things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I enjoyed having you, introducing uh, uh, the speakers and asking very smart questions because you know very well procurement. So that was uh, and that was a good experience um, as a speaker for me to to have you as a master of ceremony. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now it looks like all changed. So you've you've left your role as CPO. You're you know you're and then out of the blue, and this is why we're talking today, you're all over LinkedIn with this idea of regenerative procurement. Got, I, I, you know, on behalf of everyone, tell us what it is, what, what's it all about? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I left my, C, my last CPO role and I set up my own company and um, uh, working in procurement, obviously, because this is the only thing uh, I can do. <laughs> I still enjoy yeah. doing it. Yeah. And uh, offering some consulting, um, uh, coaching, mentoring, uh, uh, training, um, uh, uh, support to companies, uh, helping startups yeah. also working in, in procurement. And uh -huh. I was thinking, what what can I uh, do different? Because you know there is a lot of competition in in yeah, these yeah. uh, uh, um, consulting firms um, that uh, ex CPOs have launched after uh, many years of experience. So. Yeah. Um, I have. I wouldn't. I obviously, I wouldn't know about that, Elvira. It's not something I've done, obviously. He says, mm -hmm. but yeah, <laughs> we all do it. But yeah, good yeah. fun. And it's great. It's great because it's time for me to give back uh, uh, what I've received during these thirty years. I had uh, some great managers uh, yeah. that learned, uh, that yeah, some of them were less, uh, let's say, uh, supportive. But the the one the one who was supportive, they have been really helpful uh, right. in making me. Uh, growing in my um, understanding of what is my role as a as a buyer, as a as a procurement manager, as a CPU. Yeah. And um, uh, so I done a lot, of, a little bit of introspection, and I was um, remembering that in the year 2000, you might remember, yeah. we're very much about tenders, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, competitive tenders, and our role was to drop prices. It was only about yeah, prices. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, TCO was not uh, total cost of ownership nope, was not wasn't all, a, thing. Um, a topic. Nope, uh, it wasn't a thing. ESG, forget it. Uh, and um, it was more about uh, delivering savings. And every year, objective was to reduce the budgets, the, the previous year budget by three percent. That was uh, yeah. uh, the objective. Quite simple, quite quite easy, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. To do. But to but to monitor because I used to pay this ten euros or ten pounds and uh, I need just to drop the prices. And um, then then we had the first crisis, financial crisis, yeah. the subprime crisis, and then we started to um, to 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 understand that things won't be uh, as easy or at least as um, yeah. uh, simple, easy not but simple um, uh, as they used to be. And um, mm -hmm. so that was the first, uh, let's say. Um, uh, earthquake. Uh, that was a small one compared to what we yeah. have um, um, uh, observed recently. And, um, and then things started to change. And um, I've been lucky enough to join at that time Unilever and to right, uh, yeah. manage 
manage a global program called Partner to Win. That was a program that was sponsored by Paul Volman, the CEO. And the program was aiming to, um, uh, to, to, to attract innovation from suppliers. Uh, uh -huh. So again, simple, uh, but not easy to do. Um, no. And the, 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 the objective was that 70% of the innovation should come from the suppliers. Right, okay. Yeah. So how to do that? Because this is a, yeah. a mantra, right? It can be a, yeah, just yeah. a mantra, but you need to turn it into something uh, real. So yeah. um, I, my objective was to sign 100 contracts, innovative contracts with some suppliers on value right. creation, inventing new things. Okay. Uh, new product that didn't exist and yeah, making yeah. sure the suppliers can offer their technology, their innovation uh, to, to contribute to this project. So these suppliers, yeah. they can do that only if you ask them. And what about their uh, innovation they can offer? And mm. also if you allow the suppliers to come and offer some innovation to you, uh, yeah. as soon as you clarify to them what is your um, uh, what is your what is the vision? What are the objective of your company? Because if not, it goes all over the place. So it's yeah, really yeah. much building some um, partnerships, and uh, and that was very powerful, very much um, compatible with the price reduction because uh, you need to do both, right? But not mm -hmm. only price reduction and not only uh, innovation, but a mix of the two when you are CPO. Yeah. And then um, I, I, I developed similar program to the companies uh, I, I I joined after Unilever. Yeah. Uh, a program called Win Win Way, another one called Partners by Nature. And um, now I'm a consultant, and um, I was thinking, what would be the name? What would be the approach I would recommend to my customers. Right. And maybe you have heard about uh, regenerative agriculture. This is about giving back to the soil, what you have right. taken when you are yeah. making plant growing, right? And right. In, in like in the 70s uh, or the 80s, some, um, some um, people, um, they have conceptualized the, 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 the idea of uh, regenerative uh, uh, companies, regenerative economy, regenerative company. So what right. is it? it? It's to give back uh, to um, the ecosystem what you have taken. Right. And there was nothing about procurement. There was nothing. And mm. so I was thinking, let's have a specific okay. focus for procurement. And what would it mean to yep. um, be regenerative in the way you do procurement? So it, it comes from there. Got it. And what, why do you think this is important? I mean, you know, I can see the link through that transition from pure cost focus through to, you know, a broader set of values. And, you know, innovation has always been one of those things that's been very difficult to uh, turn into something tangible um, and, and therefore it often gets neglected. But I suppose, you know, what, what if if the idea of regenerative procurement works, what what do you think it will change in the way that you know procurement teams operate? Um, it's about um, creating value uh, yeah. uh, together with suppliers because when you focus yeah. only on prices, um, you 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 destroy value, right? Because you ask your supplier to reduce its margin. So when the supplier reduces its margin, right. yeah. he has less yeah. money to invest. Yeah, right? exactly. So this right. is maybe not uh, uh, this. This is maybe not the the right approach. Doesn't mean uh, uh, we need to um, accept uh, budget that are going up and up because you, yeah, yeah. as a buyer, as you know, you not only work on prices, but you you you, you need to work on costs and cost. This is something different. So a regenerative procurement. What is going to be different is that you are working uh, on cost, but uh, yeah. on a way that is going to be something. Uh, natural when you when you discuss with your supplier, it's not something you are going to argue about. This is nothing. This is not something you will negotiate. This is something that right. um, when you uh, launch a partnership with a supplier, cost reduction uh, is going to be uh, something uh, that is part of the partnership. Uh, so if it, so, so sorry, just to, uh, to interrupt. So if I come back to that idea of regenerative agriculture. It's the idea that the farmer can use the plants together with the land to improve the overall productivity and condition of the soil. And if I've understood you right, you're talking about the same idea in procurement that you work with suppliers where there isn't just a focus on pure 
yield of crop from a soil. It's about actually the broader view of, if I use the agricultural analogy, environment, habitat, biodiversity, all the things that we now know are important. It's giving that same broad view of value by not just stripping what you can from the relationship in cost terms. It's about making sure that both you and the supplier can grow. Is, is, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so oh. it means that uh, um, uh, suppliers and uh, customer will uh, enjoy working together to um, improve the ecosystem and to make the, the ecosystem yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, stronger and uh, more resilient yep. because this is also an issue yep. we currently have. So right. working on, on cost, as I was mentioning, working on innovation, so together inventing new products that meet uh, customers, internal customers or external customer needs. Right. And yep. of course, ESG, which is absolutely critical. Um, when you develop with a supplier a new project, a new product or a new service, or and you, from the beginning, the ESG specification is something yep. important, uh, mandatory, yep. uh, it's, it's easier, maybe not at the beginning, but at the end, it's easier to have something that is really working and that has impact on the environment and on the society than when you have right. to work on something that exists and then you need to change it. This is very difficult. Uh -huh. We all know that how difficult it is. I love it. So look, it, it, you know, this I, I love this idea, uh, this program of actually directly encouraging, if you like, mutual growth, mutual benefit, mutual shared value. Um, and I suppose, how are you, you know, are you finding that there is interest? Are you gaining traction with, you know, organisations? What what kind of reaction are you getting? Yeah, uh, some companies uh, uh, are very much looking to improve um, their um, ESG uh, footprint. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so obviously they are, they are, they are looking to find uh, new ways to, to operate, to accelerate uh -huh. the pace. And um, yeah, they consider this is an approach that is, it, 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 it's a philosophy, I would say, but uh, what is important yeah. is to turn it, to turn it into real action, because uh, if not, yeah. it's just a concept and doesn't work. So um, this is also what I've done, uh, setting up a, a process and how to make it happen. And there is a, a, a phrase from a French poetry, um, Pierre Reverdy, I love very much. He says, there is no love, there are only proofs of love. And I would say yeah. we can say the same with suppliers. There are Wonderful. no collaboration. They are only proof of collaboration. Because sometimes yeah. we in procurement, we, we we talk and we pretend we are going, we do, are doing yeah. things, but we know sometimes it's not so easy. So at the end, things are not happening. So what is critical is to make things happen, uh, just to I walk love the talk. That. Mm. I love that. I love that. Uh, who would have thought we'd managed to fit French poetry into a discussion about procurement? Fantastic. So look, what what are, it, it, you know, if, if anyone who's watching this wants to discover more, how can they find out? What's the best way to reach out to you to, to get information about, you know, the ideas and the process that you described? So I'm currently setting up my website. So it's going to be ah, okay. uh, available um, at the end of the summer. Uh, in the meantime, cool. uh, you can contact me on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, and, yep. uh, and if you invite me to another interview, uh, Richard, you, uh, we can you talk know I will. About, about the topic. We can talk about all the different um, elements that needs to be um, uh, modified or transformed, like the reporting, like uh, many right. things that we used to do in the past. They are still in place, uh, but the world is is at all is very much different to what what was the world even three years ago. So a lot of things need right. to change uh, to make okay. sure uh, this approach is is delivering it's because this is what we're looking for. Well, look, wonderful. And obviously, at the end of this uh, interview, uh, we'll put up Elvis' contact details on LinkedIn so that anyone can reach out and connect. And we will absolutely do another interview to actually walk through that that process those changes that you talked about but I guess look it's it's always my favorite question you know it um before anyone does anything I mean if there was one thing that you you could just say to to anybody watching this there was one thing that they could go and do in their you know in their procurement teams right now to begin this 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 approach to regeneration or, or shared growth what, what what would you say I would say that uh, uh, 
there's a sentence I said, uh, so, uh, things are existing when you give them a name. So, um, right. so uh, I, I think that it's important to name uh, your program. If you're really looking for to transform your procurement approach to something more regenerative, I would recommend you give a name to your program. So wow. everybody is aware that you are committed to do something different because you gave a name to your program. So this is like a, a making official that you are going to work uh, with your suppliers, with your stakeholders, with your yep. team in, 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 in a way that is going to be slightly different. Wonderful. Well, what a great place to leave it. Let's make it real. And like you say, you know, there is not collaboration. There is only proof of collaboration, which I, I love. So Elvira, on this occasion, lovely to chat to you. Um, and let's have another conversation and hear more about what you're doing. But in the meantime, Elvira, thank you very much indeed. Thank Bye -bye. you, Richard.